Derek Gale here, and in this lesson, I want to give you a crash course on how WordPress can unknowingly create duplicate content on your website. What I want to focus here on first is the taxonomies. Now, as we discussed in the lesson, in the blog post, taxonomies are simply a mechanism within WordPress for you to organize your content so that users can find it faster, easier, okay? So the default, most standard taxonomies that you're going to see in WordPress are categories and tags, and they can be very, very useful. And it's one of the things I do love about WordPress, particularly when you're creating big blogs because it allows you to automatically organize content and make it easy to find. But if you're not paying attention, you can also accidentally create a whole whack of duplicate content on your website, which is not going to help your rankings at all. So what we have here, you see I've created some categories, all right? So I have bath soap, organic soap, and soap making. Now, to set up this demo site, I've set it up to really highlight the problem, okay? So on this demo site, we have two blog posts. And I've included those two blog posts in each one of the categories, all right? So if I click on this category, for example, the first one, bath soap, I'm going to see any posts that are related to bath soap that I've tagged to be in that category, okay? So we first see the secrets to making organic soap, and then we can see in this category, we can read the whole post, and then we scroll down, and then we see our second post, how to make organic soap, and we can see that entire post as well, okay? So both these posts are included in this category, and you can configure how many, you know, you want to see on a page or whatever. Now, here's where it gets complicated. I can then click click on the title of these and I can go to the actual blog post okay so now here's a page dedicated to that individual blog post and all the content is here so you may have already caught on to what the problem is if you haven't let me explain it well I've got all of my content on the post page but if we go back to the category page all of the content is on the category page too so we've created duplicate content for both of these posts. Okay, so we have two posts. Each one of these have their own page and each one has the full post actually listed in the category of bath soap. Now, what you'll see in many cases is you'll create posts and you'll think, oh, these should go in a couple different categories, okay? So maybe you had soap making and bath soap. So you put both those posts in both those categories. Now, if I went to soap making, once again, I scroll down, what do I see? Ah, I see both those same posts in that category. And I can click to the post page to that. Now, the actual post itself, the post page, should be the original content. This is what you want indexed, okay? All of the taxonomies, all of the categories are just there for people to find stuff easier, okay? To group your content. But by putting our full posts into these taxonomies, into these categories, what we're creating is duplicate content. Now, if I have two posts across three different categories, that's theoretically six pages of duplicate content created from just two blog posts unknowingly, okay? And we can get even more granular because then we can get into tags. So that's the first way we create duplicate content is misusing taxonomies. And like I said in the next lesson, I'm gonna actually show you how to solve these problems, but now you understand how this actually works. You know, one of the things I do advise is try not to include your posts in multiple different categories with too many tags. And in fact, I personally avoid using tags unless I'm dealing with a really complicated site that would end up having too many categories otherwise. Now, the other thing that we can do here that is really important is we want to use excerpts, all right? Now, rather than have the entire thing displayed creating duplicate content, we're going to create an excerpt of that specific post. So, for example, let's head over to my blog and I'll show you what an excerpt looks like. 
Okay, here we are, we're on my blog, and uh, if we head up here to tips and training, we'll see all of the different categories of content, okay? And we can click on either any one of these, and that's gonna take us to the category page. And now, as I scroll down here, I've got multiple different posts in this category. But what you're gonna see is you're not gonna see the whole post, you're gonna see an excerpt, okay? So you're gonna see the first maybe 100 words or so. And so as we see this excerpt here, we say, okay, this is interesting, I wanna read more. I click to read the full article. Now. The full article, all the content for this post is actually found on the specific post page. So what's happening here is we're not creating a whole whack of duplicate content because we are not using the full post on the category page. And you know, even Google has said from a best practice standpoint, all right, you can use your posts in one category and then use an excerpt that then links to the full post and they're not gonna penalize you for that. It's when you're having your full post included in all the categories with potentially multiple tags that it becomes a problem, okay? So once again, these, if we go back here, are excerpts, okay? They're a summary of your post that's included in that category, and if they want more information, they can simply click to read the full thing, which then takes them to the full post, okay? And these category pages can actually be really good because Google's gonna scan them, they're gonna see all these different posts, they're gonna follow them through, but you wanna do it with excerpts, okay? So now I wanna show you how to actually create excerpts right from the WordPress editor. All right, here we are, we're in the standard WordPress editor, okay? And uh, we've got our blog post up called The Secrets to Making Organic Soap. If we scroll down here, you'll see we have our full post. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna choose maybe the first 100, 150 words of this post, and I want to then make that the excerpt. Now, you may have noticed right up here on your toolbar, you've got this little button, that's sort of like two boxes divided by a dotted line, and it's called the insert more tag, okay? Now, this is what you use to create an easy, basic excerpt in WordPress, okay? So let's say here's my I want to break my blog post right here, okay? So what I'm going to do is anything above this, so these two first two paragraphs are going to be the excerpt. So I'm going to put my little uh, cursor here where I want the excerpt to be, all right? And then I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to click this button. And voila, what you see here is you got this little line with the little more, okay? I'm going to click on update. Now, let's go back to our blog and actually look at what this did. Okay, so here we go, we're back to blog, how to make soap at home. Now let's go down to a category, bath soap, and let's scroll down. So as we scroll down here, before we had the secrets to making organic soap, and we had this monster of an article in here creating all this duplicate content. But now instead what we have is we have the first two paragraphs and then it says continue reading and I click and that takes me to the full article. So that is going to really help eliminate duplicate content. It's now, there's a couple other little things that I really want to point out that can be issues for creating duplicate content, all right? The next one is comment page nation, okay? And so let's go to a blog post here that has a few different comments on it. All right, so here we go. Now, for this example, what I've done is I have said that I only want two blog posts or two comments per post before it starts to paginate, okay? So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you're going to see we have one comment here, okay? But then you see a link to older comments because I've set this so I only want two comments. Now, what I want you to pay attention to here is on the actual blog post page, before we click on older comments, if we look at the URL, you'll see it's got the proper permalink, all right, to my actual blog post. But if I go in here and I click on older comments, so now it's taken me to a page to show the older comments 
And if we go up to the uh, URL, you're going to see that my permalink has now had something added to it. It's got forward slash comment dash page dash one and then number comments. Now, this can create duplicate content because Google is going to look at this as a whole new page. Even though the article is identical, it's got two little new comments on it, but it can create duplicate content okay so from a best practice standpoint i would never recommend paginating your comments all right and to avoid this this is done through the wordpress settings area so let's have a quick pop into our wordpress dashboard and i'll show you where to avoid this okay so here we are we're in our wordpress dashboard if we go to settings and discussion what you're going to see here is other comment settings and down here you see break comments into pages with and you can set the number and I set mine to two top level comments per page and the last page displayed by default so I never want you to use this I would rather see you have a long comments page than start creating duplicate content by having the page nation take place and creating different versions accidentally on your website. All right. Now, one more thing that you want to avoid that most people aren't aware that can happen is if you allow people to reply to comments and you have a reply link on your page, this can also create an issue. All right, so I'm going to show you that. Let's pop on over to uh, our comments page and uh, I'll give you a demonstration. Okay, here I am. I'm on my blog and if we scroll all the way down, you're going to see there's comments on this blog post, okay? And uh, the way I have my blog set up is people can actually, you know, reply to comments and, uh, and obviously leave comments. And if you have this functionality in your theme, which a lot of themes do because creating engagement on your website is good, it can also create a bit of a snafu as far as duplicate content is concerned. And, you know, frankly, I, it's ridiculous because Google should be able to to, uh, figure this one out but apparently they haven't okay so if you've got the ability to reply to comments what can happen is each comment creates uh, in Google's eyes what can accidentally be its own individual page so if you have potentially you know a dozen comments on a single page it can duplicate that content in Google's eyes by a dozen times and the reason this happens is it adds a parameter or a variable to the end of the URL that Google is not able to differentiate and in theory they should be able to differentiate it I don't know why they can't but they 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 haven't yet okay so if you've got comments and you've got the ability to reply so you see the little reply button to comments this can cause a problem because what it does is it makes Google think each comment is on a page of its own and I know that kind of sounds odd but that's kind of what What's happening all right so there you go those are the three ways duplicate content is created one using taxonomies and taxonomies are very very handy but you have to be careful how you use them two is comment page nation which is also a problem and three is the reply to com variable which is a little less uh, common but it's happened to me and uh, it could be happening unknowingly to you so what you need to do is you need to use plugins to make sure that all of this is optimized and also make sure you're when you're using your taxonomies you're using what I would call taxonomy best practices so you're not putting your posts in multiple different categories with multiple different tags and you're also using excerpts all right and if you're doing that you're gonna be in pretty darn good shape all right and you're gonna fix those holes that WordPress comes with and so in our next lesson we're gonna get into uh, how to uh, configure the plugins that are going to save your WordPress day. So there you go. Hope you learned something. See you in another lesson.